Okay, I'd love to hear from you guys. What does it mean for Entertainment Weekly to be embracing the improv community and having uh, this awesome team at PopFest today? Uh, I love it. I think a lot of successful comedians come out of improv training, so I think the momentum is already... I think they're recognizing a momentum that's been going on for a little bit. Yeah. What does it mean for you as a female comedian? Because I feel like it's there's a, there's a there's a movement right now. There's a lot of amazing comedians, and I like that it's at the forefront, and I like that there's better roles and juicier things going on. So what does that mean to you? Oh, it's super exciting. You know, I think one of the great things about, like, right now is that so many women are creating their own shows and creating their own material, which is really great to get uh, more women, uh, not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well. So as somebody that was a founding member of UCB, what does it mean to you to see web series being something that's able to push people to the forefront in regards to when you first started? Because I guess that didn't, that wasn't around as much, right? I guess I love it. I mean, ultimately comedy is pretty just. I think if you're funny, people will find out about you. So I love that people can be funny in Omaha and like get discovered. Like if they're funny, the only thing I would say is you need time in front of an audience like I, I do worry like if somebody is just doing a blog I don't worry I don't spend much time worrying about it worrying about those YouTubers <laughs> I do journal but you do need time in front of a stage you do need yeah. audience chops I think that's so valuable for comedy do you each have that one moment where you look back and you're like there was this one night the laughter was uproarious like is there one moment for each of you that really stands out of like this one sketch that just kind of like broke records broke all barriers that comes to mind not like a specific moment but to like speak with what matt was saying you know i toured with the second city and with that you're not only performing like archive material which you know people uh have like tried and true material there but you're also writing and creating your own so the great thing about that is like matt said you're constantly honing and tweaking jokes and so by the time it finally goes in front of an audience it is like totally tested you know and you've got the most finely tuned jokes possible so that I think is like really exciting to be a part of that and sort of like watch a sketch evolve from the first like iteration of it until like uh, it finally goes in front of an audience officially what are your thoughts uh, answer, that is a very that good, good answer, answer. Good yeah answer. yeah solid I would love to hear your thoughts are people <laughs> <laughs> they got it. I'm sure in the comments we like that girl is smart. Um, are people too sensitive nowadays? Because I saw Louis C.K. at oh, Comedy that, Store and he question. had some really um, awesome jokes that were very clever because they commented on race. But if that had ended up on YouTube, it probably would have been something where people got offended. Is that something that you're seeing more? Are people getting more? I don't more? do stand-up, so I can't testify to whether stand-up audiences are more sensitive. I, mean, I really Amy can't. Amy Schumer had Trump people freaking out in her Tampa show, walking out. I mean, is that kind of the beauty of it, though, is comedy is a place where you can talk about sensitive matters, but do it in a way where people are listening because they're I not guess, expecting it? I mean, I guess as a, perhaps in relation to the election, I think there is a disenfranchised portion of this country who feels angry about the changing tide and I think there have been incidents where those people speak up so I guess that is a little crazy or crazier than we're used to but it's also the ebb and flow of democracy. Is that a good answer? I thought so. That was good. Pull it back up. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Oh <laughs> I like that you crack yourselves up because I do that all the time. Because I'm really awkward. My friend Daniel says if I ever have a book, it'll be called Kate Lambert, No Need for an Audience. And you know what? It's true. It's true. What if you just had that bellowing laugh following you wherever you go? I mean, you go? it's pretty good. Especially when you can provide it for yourselves, which is I do all the time. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Okay, so you guys just did um, improv show. Or you're about to go do improv we show. We just did. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. What does it mean for you guys to see Entertainment Weekly hosting, loving, improv, theater, community? What does that mean for you guys? It's oh, it's super fun. You know, we've both been improvisers for a long time, and improv hasn't always been very mainstream, but now you got a lot of people who are on television and working in comedy that do it, and it was really awesome for EW to give us a little time to uh, improvise here at the festival. Yeah, Entertainment Weekly is such a, you know, such a well-respected, cool, uh, uh, you know, magazine and, and online and everything that anything anything they want us to do, I yeah. was like, very good game. Exciting. Did you guys see the Don't Think Twice movie about 
that improv from um, Mike yeah. Birbiglia. Yeah, that's great. Was this, was your shows that you guys were on, was that sort of your moment where you're like, oh my God, I crossed from improv to TV? I mean, that's a big deal. It's funny, I will say, because like, I, I have an improv show tonight. Like, I, I like I, we still do it all the time. It's not really like you, you cross to TV and then forget all about it. Like, that's the fun thing about improv is that it keeps, you can kind of do it forever. Yeah, you keep doing it, and I do it, uh, at least I know on our, the set of our show, we improvise a lot. Um, you know, improv is... Uh, it's, it's kind of the way I am, so it's been a blast to come from the theater and keep going back to the theater and work, too. Yeah, and there's so many talented people there that it's just going to keep kind of... Uh, but I'm guessing you guys ditch the day jobs. I'm guessing. Oh, Me. for sure. Yeah, I'm not doing a lot of, like, coaching or teaching anymore. I, yeah, I stopped um, nannying. <laughs> <laughs> what were your guys at? So nanny was yeah, your day I job? I worked at a video store, which was a store that... People used to go to to like rent videos. What? I don't know. I never worked at Blockbuster, but I worked at like really cool boutique video <laughs> stores. Who is one person for each of you that you would love to go do an improv show with? Uh, well, I'm lucky because uh, my biggest improv uh, fan that I'm a fan of, uh, I actually do get to do shows with. So Matt Walsh, Ian Roberts, Over Matt there. Messer, yeah. he's a founder. Yeah, yeah. yeah him, I get to improvise with him, and that's that's. Uh, I'm the that's same. Great. Like when I the first time I did a show with Matt Walsh or Besser or or Amy Poehler or you know Ian Roberts, it was like I can remember each show very specifically as being like I can't believe I get to do improv with these guys. Have you ever frozen? Because I've been to improv shows and I like watching it, but have you ever had that moment where you're just like. Or is that rookie style? You guys are way past all that. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we've been doing it for a long time. So normally we don't freeze. Uh, and if we do, we can make a funny face and <laughs> dance around, you know. So. And you kind of just, it, like, I feel like I, I even when I do still freeze, my partner has my back and they just kind of cover. Like, there, I feel like we had a, a moment in the show tonight where I was like, I don't know what the next bit is. And you just <laughs> yeah. you went for it. Yeah. You just trust your friends. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys Thank so you. much. Thank you. I'm totally. CG. You're CG? Yeah, I'm CG. You were there. Thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's like a one-man band thing. Nice. You know. Yeah. Do you guys ever, did you guys ever have to do this back in the day, like audition tapes and stuff, self-tape? Yeah. Oh yes, of course. Yes. Do you remember Let's these? Still things? do it. Is this an audition really? tape? Of course. Yeah. What are we auditioning yes, for? It is an audition tape for SNL. No, I'm Hooray! Oh, yeah. That's so round. What's improv? Cool. Um, quick question. No, my favorite movie of the year is um, Don't Think Twice with uh, Keegan oh, Michael sure. Key. Did you guys watch that? And what did you think of improv coming to the forefront feature style? Oh, it's really, we it's great. And it's also really strange, though, to see like the world we kind of came up in represented on screen and like the archetypes of our friends and stuff yeah. like that you know portrayed on screen it was really great I, I haven't seen it but a friend of mine told me that literally during watching it she felt herself like like cringy like it was a horror film like having moments of like oh my god so true yeah. you identify too but true the funny thing is is that the two of you are the other side of that story because you obviously still have a dedication to improv but mm -hmm. you are on very highly watched shows so what was the moment for each of you where you were like all right day job out the window Ooh. That's a good question. Well, you can say that. What was that? I don't know. I'm trying to that think. That was a like, good what? Good, good question. question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I it, there wasn't anything. That, there wasn't any single thing that was like, oh, because I did this, now I get to quit my day job. I, you know, like I spent years having successes, but then still not making enough money or not having enough successes. Because you'll have years where you'll get a commercial, you'll get a couple of commercials, yeah. and you'll have make a little bit of money, but then next year you get nothing. You know, and so like I continued to have jobs for many years. You know, or, or like jobs like teaching improv or yeah. doing stuff yeah, that would pick yeah up job things. pick up jobs just to make money, just to supplement getting acting work. Yeah. And I, I, and, and I just did the thing where I was like, I got a commercial that was like a campaign, and I was like, I will now quit. I was a photographer, so I just quit doing that. What commercial was that? Uh, it was for a company called Sonic Drive-In, so it was like a series oh, of... Sonic, like the, the drive through the food place? Yeah. Like the ice? They have the circle ice. They have circle ice, yeah. yeah. So all the ads were about the circle ice, only. Do you guys believe, time. like, in L.A., they say that it's either 10 years or 10,000 hours before you find your stride? Do you think this is a uh, truth? I think, or, yeah, I, I, think, think so. I think that's true for, like, just an actor's rule of thumb. And maybe for writers and anybody. I think, that's, I think that's for a lot. I think that's musicians. I think, I yeah. think you have to, I think, you know, Malcolm Gladwell talks about this in his book. You know, like, I think there's absolutely, like, an amount of time you have to put in to become consistently successful at something. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll have ups and downs within that. Like, I don't think it's like 10 years until you do anything. But the thing you is, know? like, the perception is that you come out of nowhere because 
nobody knows that you've been doing something for 10 years yeah. and then you start to get exposure and so only the exposure is what people know of it they don't know the blood sweat and tears that goes into this last question do either of you guys have a comedy hero that you haven't gotten to meet yet and they might not even be alive anymore but like one person you always were like oh yeah they're so funny and i love them and i want to work with them hmm. oh i mean for me it would it would be impossible but it would be mike nichols who died a couple of years ago i never met him but like mike uh, nichols and may uh the stuff he did with elaine may is like was hugely important to me and he was somebody that I felt always felt like I would have loved to have worked with or talked to or something. Yeah, I still I still have Christopher Guest on my okay. list. I, I have to tell you one last thing. Okay. I've heard all day they're gonna come back. We'll bring it back. You two are the only ones that have come back. So we're the best. I really we're like best. honestly appreciate that, and that's a testament to comedians. So yeah. thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it. Of course. See you guys later. Have a good one.